Hi guys, I'm Adam from Top Dog, and today I wanted to talk to you about how you can help your dog gain some weight if needed. Now, first thing before you even continue watching this video that I want you to do is get online and look at some dog body condition charts. They've got quite a few of them out there. You see a lot of them at your vet's office. Usually it's got like a yellow lab and it goes from like fattest to skinniest. But a lot of people come to me and say, hey, I want my dog to gain some weight, but really their dog doesn't need to gain weight. A lot of people think that if they can see a rib on their dog, that their dog is too skinny, when in reality, your dog is supposed to have kind of a natural waistline. Now that's gonna vary a bit depending on the breed, but overall, your dog should have a bit of a figure, and it's a good thing to be able to see at least one or two ribs on most breeds. However, if that's not the case, let's say you can see all their ribs, or a little bit of their spine, or something like that, and you're trying to gain weight on your dog, that is where you need to go ahead and start following some of the steps on this video. So we're gonna talk about starting with the simplest things you can do and moving on to some things that are gonna require a little bit more work on your part, but are gonna help you out in the long run. And we've seen a lot of success when we kind of start with this game plan. So the number one thing I always want people to start with, I've seen way too many dogs that are very active that are on a low quality food. So the very first thing I want you to start with is check the quality of your food. Now I know I've got kind of some weird lighting going on and so hopefully you guys can see this board somewhat okay. If not, I'm gonna put the words up on the screen for you anyway. But the first thing you wanna do is check the quality because if you're feeding a food that's lower quality and you might not even realize it because of the price tag, but believe it or not, due to branding, a lot of food companies out there, they put a really pretty dog food bag out, but they're producing a really low quality food. So make sure that you're feeding a good quality food. And a great way to do that is go to dogfoodadvisor.com and check out your dog food's score on dogfoodadvisor.com. You want to be getting a good quality food. If your dog is having trouble maintaining weight, you're gonna need a five-star food. Now a lot of people say, whoa, I'm already spending a lot on dog food, I can't afford that. But believe it or not, there's actually some really, really affordable options. And about half of the time when people tell me like, oh, I can't afford that, we end up finding them a dog food that costs the same as the junk food that they were feeding before and is a much higher quality. Because like I said, there's some brands out there that don't try to sell you a fancy bag loaded up with junk food. So that's step number one. Make sure that you're putting the right kind of fuel into your dog. If they're burning a lot of calories, they're not gonna be able to maintain their weight if they're not getting a high quality food. The next thing is gonna seem kind of counterintuitive, and that is don't free feed. What free feeding is, is that's where you just keep your dog's bowl full all the time. And what happens when you do that is your dog starts to feel like, well, I've got this free access to the food, and just, I don't know, it doesn't excite me as much. If you haven't noticed with your dog, most dogs tend to kind of want what they can't have, right? So it's almost like uh, two kids when they're playing together. They always want the toy the other one has. Dogs can kind of be the same way. So sometimes we find that by free feeding, the dogs start feeling like, well, the food's there, I can come and go as much as I please, and it just really diminishes their drive. So we've seen some dogs, obviously, you know, like I've had Labradors that if you free fed them, they'd be as big as a house in no time. But then I've seen other dogs where free feeding actually made them want the food less because it's just, ah, it's there all the time, who cares? Like, I'll eat it when I get around to it. So you don't want to free feed, that's a big no-no. You want to put the food down for five or 10 minutes, then come back, pick it up, and hopefully by that point, you're, after a couple days, your dog starts realizing, hey, it's not gonna be here for me all day. I should gobble it up when it gets put down. The next thing on the list is to rotate feeds. Now again, you should just kind of go down this list. Start with one thing, if that works, move on to the next. If, if that works, you're done. If it doesn't work, move on to the next thing, and so on, kind of go down the line. So rotating feeds is something that I recommend that quite a few folks do, but you don't absolutely have to do it. The reason I recommend rotating your dog food is because even a five-star food might have a slight depletion of a certain vitamin or mineral that your dog might need. So my dogs are always eating at least three different kinds of five-star foods. So I feel that provides us a really good balance. They've got different protein sources, different vitamins and minerals and all that stuff. Now a lot of people know, well, hey, when I tried switching my dog's food, they got diarrhea really, really bad. So I'm not saying you should feed one food for a month straight and then boom, cold turkey switch to another food. What I'm saying is you should build up your dog's natural digestive enzymes and bacteria so that way they can handle 
two or three different kinds of food that you're giving them. And what that does is it helps to eliminate boredom. So this is what we did with a dog that was just recently training with us, a German Shepherd, that was just really bored of his food. And so we started adding in some variation. On Monday, he got food A. Tuesday, he got food B. Wednesday, he got food C. Thursday, he went back to food A. And we just rotated through that so he didn't get as bored of his food. And just by doing that, he was able to start putting on weight because he liked his food more. He wasn't so picky about it. He was excited about his food every day, so he ate it a little bit better. Now again, you wanna make sure that you introduce those new foods slowly. If you do it cold turkey, you're like, all right, we've been feeding our dog the same food for the last month. We're just gonna add a new food. You're gonna end up with a dog that gets some diarrhea. Again, also, whenever you're adding in those new foods, go back to step one, check the quality, okay? We don't wanna be feeding a five-star food one day and a one-star food the next day. Make sure that you're feeding good quality food for your dog so that they can build weight and not just build junk food weight, we want them to put on some muscle and be very healthy, okay? So rotating your feeds, great thing to do. Even if your dog's not underweight, like I said, I do this with my dogs just because I feel like it helps balance the protein sources, the minerals, the all the nutritional things that I want my dogs to get. Step four is our very last step, and this is where you're kind of throwing some Hail Marys. I get a lot of people that tell me, well, my dog's not liking their food, so they start supplementing. And that's what I want you to do for step four. However, there's a right way to supplement and a wrong way to supplement. The wrong way to supplement would be adding like cheese and chicken to your dog's food. We get a lot of people that do that and then their dog just picks out the chicken breast and then leaves all the kibble behind. They fill up on the chicken breast and all the kibble's left behind and chicken's a very lean meat so their dog all of a sudden is losing even more weight than before. So you don't wanna do that. The simplest, again, starting with the simplest and moving to the most complex, simplest way to supplement is with a low sodium broth, chicken broth usually. Pour a little bit on the dog's food. It might make the food more enticing so the dog eats more of it. You might even warm it up in the microwave just a little bit before you pour it on the food. Sometimes that helps to stimulate them because it helps to smell a little better. And dogs don't have as many taste buds as we have, so smell is really important when it comes to eating. <clears throat> The next step of supplementation, if adding broth doesn't work, would be to use what's called a dine supplement. And dine is spelled D-Y-N-E. Dine supplements are a very high calorie liquid supplement. They're kind of a thick yellowy paste almost, and they come in a bottle. You can order it on Amazon. I'll put some links in the description down below. Um, and you can order it on Amazon. You squirt that on your dog's food. It comes out almost like liquid butter. You squirt that on your dog's food, and it's very high calorie and makes their food more enticing like the broth, but also adds in a significant amount of calories without a lot more bulk, right? Our goal here is that we can get the dog to eat and gain weight in a healthy way, but not adding so much food that we're risking the dog having stomach problems because we're adding tons of bulk as well. If dime supplements don't work for you, our third Hail Mary then, and this one is always proven to be very successful with us, is what we call satin balls. Now I say we call them that. We didn't name them that. I don't know how they got that name. It doesn't make any sense to me. I remember like 14 years ago, a veterinarian recommended this to me for a really skinny dog. And I had no idea what he was talking about. But satin balls are something you make at home. You can't buy them. You can't order them. Something you make at home for your dog that it's very, very dense in calories, but also uh, it's very appetizing to dogs. I think that's the word I was looking for. So... We want the dogs to have something that they can eat that, again, doesn't add tons of bulk, but does add lots of calories. So a dog that we've recently started doing this with, and again, this is kind of rare, but a dog that we've recently started doing this with is Bruce the Malamaw. And I say Bruce the Malamaw because currently we're working with two different Bruces. But anyway, Bruce the Malamaw. Bruce, place. So here's Bruce the Malamaw. And if you can tell in the video, he's a little skinnier than I want him to be right now. Good boy. Down. Um, uh-uh, yeah. So anyway, he's a little skinnier than I want him right now. But I'll give you an example of kind of why he's skinnier than I want him right now. This morning, he didn't finish his breakfast. So I'm gonna go grab his breakfast. So here I am with what's left of his breakfast. Now Bruce is a Malinois, so he's always excited when I first bring something up to him, but let's see if he'll eat any of it. He, an hour ago, he didn't. So if I'm lucky, he might eat a bite or two of it. But an hour ago, when we tried to give him his breakfast, he wasn't that interested in it. And same thing today, he's not that interested in it for some reason. 
from what I can tell, he maybe has eaten uh, an eighth of it, if that. And again, we've already done kind of some of the other things on the list to try to sweeten the pot a little bit. And we knew when Bruce came to us, his owners already told us that he was kind of a picky eater anyway. But unfortunately here with the amount of exercise he gets, being a picky eater has meant more weight loss than what we like to see. So again, we've already kind of gone down this list. So our next step is to go ahead and give the satin balls a try. And I'm really hoping that these work because nine times out of 10, when we throw that Hail Mary, it does work for us really, really well. So let me grab one of those, toss in his food bowl, and see if that can get him to eat. Uh, now again, these satin balls, I'm not gonna give you the step-by-step -step instructions of how to make them today. Um, I think some other people have made some great videos about them, and Google has great instructions. I make them at home and then bring them into work, and uh, that's just, it's a lot easier. I've got a food mixer at home that just helps with the mixing process. But basically, it's, you know, it's got some ground beef, it's got some wheat germ, it's got these things in it that are gonna help to get him the calories that we need to bulk up a little bit faster than just going some of these other routes, okay? So I just mash it up into kind of a meatball, basically. I've got a container with about two pounds of it that I brought in today. I'm not gonna feed him two pounds today. Um, but again, you know, just this one meatball here is gonna be the caloric intake of, depending on his food, of maybe like four cups of food. So we make a little meatball for him. We're gonna see how he likes it. Let's see. Oh, I think this is pretty promising. He's already down in that pretty good. Well guys, I couldn't be much happier with those results. Bruce actually got so excited about that satin ball that when he was looking for more of it, he spilled part of his bowl of food. That's why you notice some kibble on the ground that I just had to clean up so I wasn't stepping on it and crushing it into the ground. So, huge success for us, right? He's sitting here, he's still got some kibble left in his bowl. Bored of that, but he is ready for another satin ball and I think I just might give him one. Now I know some of my friends might be watching or some of you Malamaw enthusiasts that might be watching might say, hey, he's a one-year-old Malamaw, of course he's gonna go through skinny phases, they all do. I know that, but my thoughts on it are basically, if I can help offset it, why not help offset it a little bit, right? So if you've got a breed that yes, typically go, when they're going through hormone changes at a year old and stuff, they get kind of skinny. Yeah, it's, it's normal, but at the same time, I feel like I can kind of help them get over that hump a little bit, and satin balls is usually a great answer for that. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Adam, this is my buddy Bruce. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>